Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you about a novel AI model for anomaly detection in multivariate time series data that we call TRANAD, which stands for Transformer Based Anomaly Detector. I am Shesh Thuli, a PhD student at Imperial College London, and this is a joint work with Giuliano Casale and Nick Jennings. So we define a problem as detection and diagnosis of anomalies in multivariate time series data. And anomaly here means any pattern in the data that does not conform to expected behavior or trends. And this may arise, for instance, um, in the form of cyber intrusions that could lead to sudden rise in network traffic to an FTP server, or say credit card fraud that leads to abnormally high purchases on a credit card. And anomalies directly translate also to cyber physical systems um, that we use as a running example, such as if there is a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack on a web app running over a cloud platform with multiple different hosts in a distributed setting. And such issues can cause su sudden contentions, giving rise to system downtimes and have adverse effects on the overall quality of service of distributed systems. Here, detection is important to run remediation steps and to know when to run these steps. And diagnosis is critical for targeted remediation. To detect anomalies, we extract various observable and quantified parameters, such as the resource utilization characteristics of the different compute nodes in an infrastructure. So each dimension in the multivariate data that we collect corresponds to a specific node or host in that setup. And we can then use a data-driven model to study anomalies in such a setup. So now that we have defined the problem, let me briefly discuss the specific aspects or challenges we would like to address as part of this work. Now, anomaly detection is a broad problem and has been a popular research topic for many decades, but due to the rise of paradigms such as Internet of Things, the number of data sources has increased tremendously in the last few years. And now we are in a deluge of data, so to speak. Another point to note here that exacerbates the problem is that modern applications are time critical. For instance, servers that host social media websites need near real-time detection of anomalies in the various parts of their distributed infrastructure. Similarly, online gaming servers or even traffic management systems on road or transport links, all these need to quickly detect anomalies to be able to run remediation steps as soon as possible. Another issue is that anomalies are very rare. So even if you can come up with a way to detect anomalies, testing it would require data corresponding to several timestamps. So we can't really do without the massive amounts of time series data that we have. And further, anomalies usually have dramatically adverse effects so we want to make sure that our true positive set is as large as possible, or in other words, we have very high recall. And finally, in most cases, getting expert labels is hard. So we need to formulate anomaly detection as an unsupervised problem and not a supervised binary classification setting. To illustrate and summarize all of this challenges, metaphorically, there is a graphic to the right that I'd like to show to people to just highlight that anomaly detection is like finding a needle in a haystack and the haystack is on fire and we have no supervision whatsoever. Considering all of these challenges, the main contribution of this work is on how can we accurately detect anomalies even with limited data and limited training time. Before I dive into the method itself, um, let me first discuss some insights and intuitions. So usually time series data follows two kinds of trends. First is called seasonality or the long-term trend and the second is called locality or short-term trend. For instance, as per the plot shown here of call volume in thousands in a city like London over a couple of work weeks, there are two types of trends here. One trend is that the call volume is high in daytime and low at night. So this follows the periodicity of a day and also that the call volume drops gradually after peaking around noon, which is again a local trend. Now, prior work, especially the state of the art methods typically rely on deep neural networks to detect anomalies. And to do this, they partition the complete time series into equal sized chunks that are referred to as time series windows or local contextual windows. And they utilize either feed forward network, convolution neural networks or recurrent networks to capture historic trends and reconstruct time series. If the reconstruction is close enough to the original data, then they say that there is no anomaly. Otherwise, there is some sort of an anomaly flag. And one clear observation is that having such windows allow such models to effectively capture the local or short-term trends in the data. However, to capture the seasonal or long-term trends, it is hard to send the complete time series as an input, which in a sense means having a very large window size as an input, 
as the inference time of such models is proportional to the input size. This is not an ideal scenario and we would rather prefer having a model to which sending both the local and complete time series data to run any kind of inference um, is more or less agnostic to the size of the data. So as part of the first intuition, we would like this model to have uh, characteristics such that we can send both local and seasonal trends in tandem without scaling uh, or increasing the size, uh, increasing the time to inference. The second main intuition in our work is related to the noise in the time, time series data. Now, when we produce a reconstruction of an input time series, it is possible that the deviations may be due to the noise in the data or an actual anomalous event in the system. For instance, considering the same column volume time series data, the black line is the true data, red line is the reconstruction. Now it is clear that the deviation between the red and black lines are higher during the day than at the night. And this is possible due to the stochasticity of call volumes is available. So we need a way for our model to be aware of the intervals where there may be higher noise than the neighboring intervals. So this is what we call the second intuition of this work, which we take into account. And Within these two intuitions, the first one being that we need to capture both seasonal and long-term trends, um, we need to feed in the noise part of the time series data to ensure we can explicitly pick out anomalous cases. For the first intuition, we use a transformer model that uses self-attention to make it more or less agnostic to the size of the input time series. And for the second intuition, we use a two-phase inference procedure where the first phase produces a rough inference reconstruction, and the second phase uses the deviation uh, trace as an additional input to perform reconstruction again. So let me now introduce the transformer model uh, used for predicting a reconstruction of an input window. So in the first phase, we take an input window W and the complete sequence until the current time steps C. The complete sequence is concatenated with a zero vector um, and positionally encoded and passed on to a transformer encoder. And this encoder encodes the complete history into a single embedding. The attention module in the window encoder then gives a contextual embedding of this window where the context is conditioned to the complete sequence embedding. And finally, the conditioned or contextual window embedding is then sent to the two decoders to reconstruct outputs over and over. And both of these are trained using the mean square error with uh, the input window W as the loss function to update the parameters of the neural network which is referred to as reconstruction loss in the paper as shown here. In the second phase, we send the reconstruction loss of the first decoder back as a focus score to the first encoder, which was zero vector in the first phase. And this is shown by the dotted line uh, in the top of the figure. And then we follow the complete process again to generate this O2 hat as the output of decoder two. And the idea is that the reconstructed output of decoder one in the first phase would be an approximate reconstruction of the time series window, allowing us to use the deviations as an indication of some focus points to amplify the anomaly score and make a localized contextual judgment using this as a prior in the second phase. And I would say the goal of the second phase is slightly different from that of the first phase. We want the focus scores to be precise as possible. And to achieve this, we use this kind of an adversarial training style where the objective of the second decoder is to act as an adversary to the first decoder. Specifically, the second decoder aims to distinguish between the input window and the reconstruction generated by the first decoder in phase one, which is O1, by maximizing the difference between O2 hat and W. Now, on the other hand, the first decoder aims to fool the second decoder by aiming to create a degenerate focus score, which is a zero vector, by perfectly reconstructing the input O1 equal to W. And this pushes the decoder two in this phase to generate the same output at, as O2, uh, which it aims to match the input in phase one. So this means that the training objective is the same as is shown here as an adversarial loss. And in a sense, what is happening is the decoder two wants to say that the focus score generated by decoder one are incorrect. And hence the output of the second phase is not a good reconstruction. Whereas decoder one wants to fool the decoder two by forcing it to minimize this loss. And now that we have loss functions for both phases, we need to determine the cumulative loss function for each decoder. And for this, we use uh, an evolutionary loss function, which is shown here. Um, we need to determine the cumulative loss where the evolutionary loss function combines the loss of 
the two phases where n is the training epoch and epsilon is a decay parameter and this initially gives a higher weight to reconstruction and eventually weighs the adversarial loss higher so now that we have a transformer model that can precisely reconstruct an input local contextual window by utilizing the complete sequence as well as the deviations from an approximate reconstruction as per the two phase procedure and considering this let me now describe how we generate anomaly labels so for each dimension of the multivariate time series data an example is shown here in black we generate reconstruction shown in red and the deviations between the ground truth and the reconstructed values uh, are shown in green as anomaly scores and we utilize any dynamic thresholding technique so to set a threshold at each time step above which we label the time step to be anomalous and in this work we use a popular extreme value value theory based dynamic thresholding strategy which is called the peak over threshold or pot and for details i refer you to our paper now that we can generate anomaly labels for a dimension of the multivariate time series we can run this iteratively for each dimension to generate labels for the complete data set so the complete five pipeline is as follows where one we train the trinat transformer model using a training data set second we generate a reconstruction of the test data set third we generate anomaly scores as the deviations between the test data and reconstructed data and finally we use the speak over threshold technique to generate anomaly labels from anomaly scores for each dimension of the time series and visualization of that is shown here the test data is shown in black reconstruction in red anomaly scores in green the red bands show the intervals where the anomaly labels are predicted to be one and blue bands show the ground truth of the data to test the efficacy of the trinan model we compare against time state of the art methods which range from Merlin, which is a time series discord discovery based method to LSTM NDT, which is an LSTM based reconstruction model, DAGMM, which is a deep autoencoder Gaussian mixture model for reconstruction, and even generative adversarial models such as MADGAN and graph attention based models such as MTADGAT and GDN. In terms of data sets, we use two univariate data sets, the Umenta Anomaly Benchmark and UCR and multivariate time series data sets include MBA, SMAP, MSL, SWOT, WADI, SMD, and MSDS. And here SMD and MSDS are taken from real life edge and cloud computing environments. And for further details of the baselines and data sets, I refer you to our paper. In terms of the metrics for detection, we use accuracy, precision, recall, area under the ROC curve and F1 scores. For diagnosis, we use hit rate and normalized discounted cumulative gain. And we also generate these numbers when we give only 20% of the training data to measure how data efficient each model is and we compare the training time to measure the training efficiency of these models. The anomaly detection scores as shown in this table uh, summarize that Tranad gives up to nearly 18% higher F1 scores and 12% higher AUC scores compared to baselines. In a limited data budget that is when only 20% of the training data is used for anomaly detection or training uh, Trinad gives up to 14% higher F1 scores and 11% higher AUC scores. And this table shows the diagnosis results for only two data sets for brevity. And here too, Trinad is able to improve diagnosis scores by up to 6% for SMD and 30% for MSTS. And perhaps the most significant improvement by using Trinad is in terms of training time. Uh, and Trinad gives anywhere between 75 to 99% reduction in the training time compared to the state-of-the-art baselines as shown in here. And this is primarily due to the attention-based transformer model where we can infer over time series data in parallel compared to say a recurrent model where we can perform an inference only sequentially. So in practice, for a data set like SMD where the state-of-the-art methods uh, in terms of F1 score, which is GDN, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to train. Tranad can be trained in less than a minute, allowing our method to scale with data set size. So to summarize, Trinad gives much better scores compared to baselines for two reasons. First, that we feed both local and global contextual information. And second, that it performs reconstruction in two phases where it uses the deviation scores generated through its first phase while generating reconstruction in the second phase for informed uh, prediction. And this allows our model to give higher detection and diagnosis performance while being both data and time efficient. Thank you.
for your attention all code and data sets are available on github under psd license please feel free to ask me any questions on email